Well, hello and welcome to Always the Wild Ones. My name is Vanessa Lee and today I am going to take you through my Rip Stylist collection, which is very, very new to me. I'm still learning along the way and I thought I would share the tips and tricks that I have discovered so far. Um, I'm going to take you through all the good and the bad. <laughs> and yeah, I'll just reveal everything that I know about them. And if you have any tips or tricks for me, I would definitely appreciate that. Please do leave that in the comments down below. Not just for me, but for everyone. So yeah, let's get into it. I'm going to start with, um, oh yeah, gosh. I actually cut my Ripsalis Paradoxa Minor yesterday. I was chopping up a whole bunch of plants and it just got in the way somehow. <laughs> anyway, so I've allowed the stems that I cut off to harden and callus over. And I do, be I do believe that they are ready for potting now. So I'm gonna do that first and then I will go through, not that there's a lot of them. My Ritzala's collection is tiny. I only have the six. But, yay, oh my gosh, they're not that easy to find either. Um, even though I'm here in Europe, well, we're not really, a, well, we're not really Europe, but I still consider it Europe. I mean, we're right next to everybody else. I mean, I'm here in the UK, so apparently they are meant to be fairly easy to find, but I haven't found that myself. So if anybody else lives in the UK and you have a great website or a store that you know of that is predominantly known for having Ripsalis and has a substantial collection, like more than just the kind of the average ones that you see, just, you know. <laughs> what am I trying to say? I want more Ripsalis, <laughs> if anybody knows of a store in the UK that I can buy for, whether it's online or not, I would love to know. So also leave those in the comments down below. Anyway, oh gosh, I'm really rambling on. Let's just get on with it. I don't know if I'm just kind of like trying to put this off or yeah, I'm kind of stalling, but it needs to be done. And yeah, fingers crossed it will So I cut down. these off my plant, um, off my Paradoxa, my Ripsalis Paradoxa Minor. Um, yeah, and they have been callousing over for the past, um, let's see, I cut them yesterday around 2 p.m. It's about 24 hours, just over. So I'm now going to put them back in the pot with all the rest of the plant. I took the camera down so you can see what I'm doing and hopefully they will root and just carry on growing. Fingers crossed. So here we are. I don't know how easy this is going to be. I've never done this before. This will be like my first kind of propagation, I guess. Oh my God, please let this be easy. Okay, so I just need to make some holes, I guess. I think I want to put one kind of here-ish. Let's hope it works. Okay, so these have, this one has quite a few roots on the bottom there. That is good news. Now all I need to do is try and get it as deep as I possibly can. This metal one as well. Okay, I think she's in. Let's just hope she stays in place. Just stay there, baby. And then the rest, I guess I'm gonna to have to try and put a little bit further back. So 
since I have so much space back here. Can you see those flies coming out? That's really annoying. Yeah, I'll do them back here. So I just need to get it nice and deep. There we go. She is in. Just checking to see that you can see. Oh my gosh, I'm losing a lot of this dirt. So this is actually the soil that I used for this was the soil that I would normally use. I think it's jungle mix. And I wouldn't mind changing this substrate at some stage. I wonder if that's a thing that I should do now. No, I'm going to leave it because, I mean, I can see that it's definitely created new roots since I bought it. So it seems to be liking this soil. I think it's probably easier to use my finger. This one also has just like the one root here. So I definitely don't want to get that in nice and deep sling you forward hopefully she'll just stay in place and I've got these dead ones I think I'll take those out taking up valuable space there's another one here that out right I'm now just going to give it a little bit of water so I've already mixed up some uh, gold leaf fertilizer it's the only fertilizer that I'm using at the moment I wasn't using a different type um, for quite some time and I have definitely noticed a huge difference like I was just using a kind of you know the kind of um, fertilizer you would find at most garden shops I do not remember the name of it but if I find an empty bottle I'll take a photo and put it up but it's unlikely that I have any left really okay so where was the other one it was kind of around here hopefully look oh gosh okay I need to stop watering so the reservoir is very full I don't know if you can see that but it is I'm gonna go and pop it back up on the shelf and let's just hope that these things do not fall out yay right so I'm glad I finally got that done there's nothing really that I want to do with the um, Ripsalis, but I will show you around my collection, um, as it says on the title. <laughs> so I'm going to start with this little guy, which I've now had, um, gosh, I think I've had this plant for about two or three months. It's very small, it's got loads of new growth. You can see there on the top, like all the little fresh green, fluffy little, I don't know what to call them actually. Stems? <laughs> Shoots, I don't, know, I don't know what they're called. But um, yeah, so this one is a Ripsalis Pilocarpa. I think that's the right name. I'll put the correct name if I did say that wrong. Um, now, let's see. I still don't really know what I'm doing to take care of this plant, but I'm definitely putting water on this plant probably once or twice a month during the summer so far. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do in the winter. I probably won't water this very often at all in the winter. And I put this one in like a little vessel, which I bought from Little Dobby's. I absolutely love these little measuring jugs, like chemistry jugs. They're so cute. 
and yeah i'm really happy with her and she really is growing it's just nuts it really is just crazy how much she's growing she lives down here um with like a bunch of other plants underneath this table and yeah there's a plant light on the top it's not particularly strong it's right at the back as well but the sun does travel along the floor here because i've got skylights so yeah i get a lot of sun along the floor and let's move on to the next one now this one i can't remember how to say it i know how to spell it but i just can't remember how to say it so i'll just put the name up it's another Ripsalis. This one also has been growing like crazy now the summer is here. And you can see all of these. If I can find a picture of when I first bought this plant, you'll see it's like, I mean, look, it's not the fastest growing in the world. It is a really tiny plant. It's a baby to begin with. But look at all these new shoots. You can see them all. Like they're just, all those like ones are pointing up like that fresh new shoots i'm very very proud of this plant now this one i kind of do know what i'm doing this one likes to stay a little bit more moist i'm definitely watering this one when i see that the vessel is empty i wait like a couple of days and then i'll go ahead and i will i will actually try and fill the um the reservoir did i call it a reservoir earlier i don't know if i did i'm still quite fluey so my brain's all over the place um what else oh and this one also lo loves a mist so i i get my misty thing and actually i can see a little bit of wrinkling so i might miss this one today i have some fertilizer in the mist and i'll show you the um the device that i use to mist this with but you can mist it with anything really as long as it's like a nice fine spray what is that it's like something dead on my plant yeah and i really can't wait to start seeing this one trailing i can't imagine that happening this summer but maybe by next summer we're gonna have a much bigger plant to look at so i will definitely keep you updated on this one and i'm just so pleased with them like why do i like ripsala so much there's something very botanical about them and I guess they're not just your standard leaf, which is great. It's just something new. I'm not sure exactly why, but they're just, they really give that kind of fresh, I suppose like grass almost. But um, I mean, once they start hanging, they do not look like grass. I'm gonna show you another one. So you kind of get a feel of what it will potentially look like. So this one is a Ripsalis. Put the name up. You can see that she's wrinkling. So look, can you see that wrinklage there? She definitely needs water. So this one, oh my gosh, the roots were so tiny when I bought this. Now I have done a video where I repotted three of my Ripsalis and definitely check that out because you will see that the roots were not anything like what they are now and all the way around I mean check out that root that is just she is going for it she really is um and I've had a lot of growth a lot I really do hope that I took a photograph of this one before I repotted it when I bought it from the store it came in this tiny tiny little pot I think about six centimeter pot and, and yeah I mean it wasn't overly squashed in there but you can kind of see like it's fairly spread out in this pot so yeah let me just quickly water it because I'm actually I might forget if I might actually forget to do that otherwise and how often am I watering this one probably the same to be honest about every two weeks let's see just look checking the reservoir to see how much is going in there I think that's enough yeah, and I really can't wait for this one to grow now. Oh my gosh. I mean, pretty much 
a lot of this is new, but look how fresh and new that little sprouty bit is. Oh, I'm so excited and I'm just so pleased that I've managed to, because this, like, I've managed to master almost, almost, I've almost managed to master Ripsalis. Now, Ripsalis for me is part of the whole succulent section and I've always been quite bad with succulents. Like, I don't know, like I just didn't really understand them that well. Now I'm kind of like, okay, I get it. They don't like too much water in the winter. That's kind of like probably where I messed up the most. Dead one. When you don't hit the watering on time with these Ripsalis, they will literally just like, yeah, there's, there'll be a dead sprog. Oh no, not you. Okay, that's not good. So that one's looking kind of dead, but I'm gonna poke her back in again. Hopefully she'll just re-sprout. Okay, I'm gonna stop picking. Um, what was I saying? So yeah, Ripsalis are, I'm just gonna move on. <laughs> Ripsalis are um, jungle cactus. So they don't need a hell of a lot of light, although mine are getting a fair amount of light. Um, there's a southeast facing window there. And over there, there's a southwest facing window. So there's a lot of light in this room and all the hours from I think the sun rises now. Let me just check. When does the sun rise? Probably like six or something. I don't know. I don't get up at that time, clearly. Um, yeah, <laughs> the sun rises at 4.58. And then the sun goes down at 9.15. So, whoa, that's quite a few hours of sunlight um apart from when it's overcast like today it's just been kind of sporadic bits of sun here and there um which is why i keep the grow lights on in this section in particular because it's an alcove you can tend to get a bit dark in there moving on this is my ripsalis macratha micratha I know that it's the right the right word, but I don't know if I'm saying it right. Um, again, this one, I mean, the roots aren't as hectic as the last, but you can see she's got beautiful, nice, long roots, all trying to get down into this reservoir. And I, I just, yeah, I mean, that's a th another thing with these um, non-drainage uh, situations when you have a reservoir of water at the bottom, obviously don't fill the reservoir too much. You don't want like the soil to get so soaked up because this is in desert mix, it's not in pond. They're all in desert mix actually. I should have said that in the beginning. But what I've noticed is that like the whole kind of like humidity maybe and the fact, I suppose, that there aren't, there isn't any oxygen in there apart from what the perlite and um, volcanic rock that's in there that's creating. And they just seem to, this reservoir just seems to instigate a lot of the roots wanting to get down there as quickly as possible. So I think that's why the root system has kicked in so quickly. This one, I think, this one and the one that I showed you before, I've had maybe two months. I will put the correct time up. Um, the first two that I showed you, I've had maybe a month earlier. I bought a month earlier. And uh, yeah, I'm just really loving this. It's not really, it is growing. You can see that there is growth. Like these little, little bitty bits, um, like these little extra little pieces. But I was really hoping for like really long. You'll get there. Maybe by next summer, you'll be nice and long and hanging over the pot so that you can't even see it almost. But yes, um, there is a little bit of water in the bottom there. So I will not be watering this 
and then once I see that that is completely dry, like bone dry, then I'll wait about three days and then I'll water it. But you know, sometimes I take my eye off the ball and I miss that day. But with that one, it doesn't go, it, nothing seems to happen if you miss the watering. It's definitely more forgiving than the one before. And then this one is my Ripsalis Red Coral. Um, you can still see that there's some humidity there in the bottom. So there's definitely water there. Again, she's in one of these vessels. I bought this one at Dobby's also. You can't really see what it says there, but it actually says natural history. So I really like it. It's just so cute. They're very funky. Um, I haven't seen a hell of a lot of growth on this one either. She's looking really dusty. I don't know if that's dust or not, to be honest. I might give this one a bit of a wash. Um, but it's definitely working on its root system, which is fantastic. Um, so yeah, I keep saying um. So yeah, you can see that the roots are quite tiny they're quite tiny in there but they are they are growing and that's definitely what it's working on at the moment and the one that's showing the most growth has the longest roots so yeah i'll just wait for its roots to get a little longer and then i will wait for the growth oh i just love them i love them so much and i now have six ripsalis i'm so chuffed i'm actually going to show you my um epiphyllum as well although she's not a ripsalis i just thought i would include her in the collection because she is a jungle cactus and she has grown like crazy i bought this one in i think february march april may june july so we're talking five months um hopefully i have a photo of this one before i um before it grew or yeah but yeah she is just going for it and i'm really chuffed and you can see like there's new bits coming out of new bits. All of these are new, like the ones that kind of tend to stand up like that are the new ones. And all of these that are hanging were here originally, not this one, this one's new. Can you believe that that is a new, like, I don't know, stem? <laughs> um, yeah, and then it's also doing this quite interesting at the moment it's actually growing out of the side of each of the stems so there's like these little fluffy extra bits coming off the sides so yeah this is gonna get kind of crazy she is gonna just take off I have definitely noticed that this one does not like too much Sun yeah, this one's just, oh, she's so cute, this new little baby one. Yeah, she doesn't like a hell of a lot of sun, which is fantastic because she lives up on the shelf and it's not a hell of a lot of light that gets to that shelf. I'll show you just now where she lives. When I bought the plant, she was actually a rescue plant and had like quite a few of the stems I had to cut off. So I cut off the the bad bits and kept the, the good bits and I grew a whole new plant and again you can see all these fuzzy little look how fuzzy and cute I hope you can see that how fuzzy that is but yeah she's so she's doing so well she's doing and these are new these bits these are all new so the the cuttings that I put in this part is this one, this, 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 and this. Oops, sorry, and this. <laughs> and yeah, even on, yeah, it's just, it's just nuts. It's just very interesting how this plant grows. 
So you might put a cutting into a pot here and it will grow not only off of the stem that you've put in, but also from the root system or I'm not sure exactly how it works, but it definitely just grows from like the base of where the cutting is. Brain, oh my gosh. It's just, oh, it's so hard to think when you're, when you're sick. Um, yeah, anyway, that's that one. So that's the last one I'm gonna show you. I will just give you a quick look at where they're all living and then I'm gonna say goodbye. So yeah, there is my epiphyllum, the zigzag cactus in her glory. So as you can see at the top there, there's no light getting to her top wise. And right up the very top is the paradox, the Ripsalis paradox. Uh, minor. And she has got some length to her. And again, no top lighting. Just a little bit of light from the window, but not a huge amount, a little bit of light from the grow lights, but that's all she's getting. And she's been doing so, so well. And then I have these guys just here. Um, this Ripsalis actually lives on the floor just there. So she gets a lot of light because she's right in front of that southwest facing window and she's right in front of this southeast facing window. She's spoiled. And then down the very bottom are the two little babies. Just hanging out there with some Hoyas and my cutting from the zigzag cactus. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's those dudes, six little rip stylists. I can't wait to get more. I'm really loving them. And I'm loving that they are kind of loving me. So thank you so much for hanging out. And um, yeah, I hope that you enjoyed the video. I really enjoyed doing it. And I can't wait to do more Ripsalis videos. I mean, basically I want more Ripsalis. I don't know if I made that clear during the video. <laughs> but yeah, I can't wait to get my hands on some new Ripsalis. I want to get another Paradox. Uh, I want to get like the, just the, the really fat one, like the normal one, not the minor. Um, and the, I think there's one called Horridia. I'm going to get that one because it's really fluffy. And... I kind of, I think I know where I might be able to get those, but if you can suggest some others and if you know where I can buy them, that would be a bonus. Do put that in the comments down below. And yeah, if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, please hit the subscribe button because I can't wait for this family to get big enough to hit that thousand and have one of those like placard things. I think you get one when you hit a thousand subscribers. I don't know. I think that still happens. I really hope that that still happens because I want one. Although I don't know where I'm going to put it. Like, yeah, where would it go? <laughs> Maybe in the bathroom. <laughs> I think that's what people do. Yeah, so um, jokes aside. Have a fabulous week and I will see you here again very soon. All right, until then, bye.